All right, so in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to dress the loom and get the warp spacers on it. So first what I'm going to do is, so once you finish, you have your loom, um, this, this can be done on probably most frame looms that you have, whether you have tabs or nails, that part doesn't matter too much. Um, so I'm going to first start by creating a knot, slip knot. So take, I'm going to pinch the ends here, pinch one end here, and then with the other hand, with my index finger and thumb, so it's kind of like I'm creating a V, I'm going to use my middle finger of my left hand to kind of help control the tension with the string. So I'll show it one more time. Pinch, get your pinchers out of your right hand, like this, open them. I'm using my ring, um, sorry, my uh, middle finger of my left hand to kind of help hold this and actually the other fingers too. Then I'm going to create an X. I'm going to, so here, like I said, this is like a V, but now I'm going to really move this um, two pinchers here on my left hand, create an X. I'll show that again. So I'm just creating an X. And then with these two on my right hand, I'm going to create, I'm going to grab the string closest to my middle finger. And I'll show that again. There. And then I'm going to gently pull it through. And that creates a knot. So now I can let go of the end and I can pull this and it tightens this main string here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is this. Um, I like to dress the loom or add the warp not so close to the ends. When you have this, of course, it's nice because you get a wider piece. However, um, I like to add the warp spacers and they're going to pull them down. So I recommend that you at least bring in um, the warp, add the warp at least a one inch into uh, the loom. So, so here my nails are measured at roughly, well it shouldn't be roughly, but it is human error as well, but they are uh, a quarter of an inch spaced. So I'm just going to take the warp. I'm going to take maybe one, two, three, four. Uh, I don't need it to be too wide. So maybe I'll just go in eight. Of course, you can start here. There's nothing saying you can't, but because I like to add the warp spacer and I like to have some space between my hand and the weaving. So if I create, if I dress the loom, here, I'm just gonna add this yarn here just to show you what I mean. If I, dress the loom starting from this, the very first yarn. Let's say I need to get behind or I need to, to uh, grab the edges here just to tighten it a little bit. It's it's gonna be a little bit difficult. Like even now, oops, even now as I'm trying to grab it, it's, it's a bit difficult. I can barely get my finger in there and um, I really want to have that space. So I would recommend at least a half an inch, um, but I prefer at least one inch to two inches, if possible, away from um, the side of the loom here, especially if you're working with a loom like this. I'm going to repeat that just so I can tighten my knot. Okay, so I'm going to take the knot off of my finger. And for me, I'm going to go into four, six, seven. Well, no, you don't really don't have to go that far, but that should be enough. Two, four, six. I'm grabbing, putting it on to the sixth nail. You can see that there. And now to tighten it, I'm just going to pull here. Push that yarn down. Okay, there we go. So now we want to continue. So I want everything to be equal. So let's say I do want to create a piece that is this wide. 
Um, so I want it to be even, or even if you just want it to be a few inches wide, um, it doesn't matter so much, but let's say I want to use most of the loom for this piece. So I have two, four, six. So I know the sixth one here is marked. So I want to do the same for the top. So here is the top of the loom. So I have one, two, two four, six. So now I'm going to move the yarn, the warp, around the first one, just like that. So and then I'm going to continue down. Now I'm giving it some tension. I'm keeping the tension. Hold on just a moment. Sometimes the yarns get a little tangled there. So let me show you. So I got it from the bottom. I go to the top. I wrapped it around. Now I'm pulling the warp all the way down. And I'm going to the very next string, or sorry, the very next nail. Now again, I'm holding the tension, pulling it taut. Now, then I like to use another finger to kind of hold it in place or hold that tension, move the warp around the nail. Sure you can see that. And now I'm going to continue doing this until I get to the next one at the top. Again, I'm holding the tension as I pull the warp through the nails. All right, so we're going to just continue this again, holding the tension. Tension is a really important um, part of dressing the loom. Um, <clears throat> after we dress the loom or add the, uh, the warp to the loom, uh, we're going to also tighten the tension once more, but it's important that as you are adding the warp or dressing the loom that you are holding that tension. Okay, this is definitely going to be more, it's going to be helpful for you as you, um, yeah, for the next section when you are adding, when you are, when you are going to tighten the whole entire piece. Now, if you find that um, the yarns are loosening up for any reason, if they're coming off out of place, then you really want to check your tension that you're doing. So if, if it's way too loose, it should be able to hold its own. Um, for example, if I, let me just get this. When you hold it to the side, nothing should fall out of place. So here I'm giving it a good shake. Nothing, none of the yarn should come out of place. Everything should still stay in place. Um, so if you find that your tension is a little loose, um, definitely start from the beginning and re-tighten it. This process takes some time and it's a very important step that you take before you even start designing. So it's a, it's a little tedious but it shouldn't take you too long to do. I, I like to give myself about 30 minutes for this entire process or so before I even start designing. Let's see. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, that's the sixth one. And over here, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, okay, good. So, actually, I think that's a good part to stop at. Um, but I also wanna make sure, for me, I like to weave with even strings because I usually weave with every two yarns and not every other one because I want to work with a lower density. Um, so actually, I think this is a good number of strings and it's centered, so that looks nice and everything up here is even. So what I'm going to do is this. So one other last point I want you to just look at here. I'm going to just 
to secure this in place, I don't want to tie this string. So I've just looped it around the last warp, or I'm sorry, last nail. Now I'm just going to use the neighboring nails here. I'm just going to wrap it around there a little bit so that the yarn doesn't come undone. Okay. Just do whatever I can to, to keep the end secure without tying it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so before I get this tape, sorry, I should have mentioned I should need uh, some two strips of tape. Um, the, the other thing I want you to notice here is that I like to keep the end, the two ends at the same, on the same side of the loom. Now, if you are not displaying your piece, then I don't think that matters so much. But if you stop at one side, and then stop on this side, then it's gonna make the hanging process or the displaying process a little annoying, I would say. So in order to skip any frustrations with displaying the piece, I like to have one row on the top that is just for displaying the piece. So there's no ends here, everything is clean, it's even, straight. But here at the bottom, it's okay because we're going to secure these ends later. So I'm not worried about um, one side being uneven or something like this because both sides have the knots here. And later I'm going to cut this off at this end here. So, all right, I hope that's clear. Um, the next thing is tape is going to be your friend for this part. Sorry for the noise. Um, I don't like to use scotch tape or this plastic um, stick tape, but it's what I have, so I'm going to use it. Um, I like to put a piece of tape, a thicker piece of tape, hopefully you can see it, although it's transparent. I like to get the tape and put it on along the bottom row here, and I'm going to show you why in just a moment. So I lay it on top. Push down the warp strings a little bit here. And then it's kind of like I'm just wrapping it around, wrapping the tape around the nails, just so they stay in place. Actually, maybe it is good to have this transparent because you can see. I even tried to, to squeeze it a little bit so that the tape on both sides can uh, stick together. All right, now I'm gonna get one more strip of tape. For me, it's already okay to cut this string here. I'm not gonna need any more warp. So I'm flipping around the loom. So I want to get tape that is the width of the loom. There we go. And again, here it is, here's the width, goes over it. Just wrapping the nails with this. Okay, so now the nails are secure. And again, I don't like to use this type of tape because it's um, it will come undone. And if you have something like painter's tape, then it really stays on nicely. And I find it a lot easier to reuse. So I have, I keep two strips of uh, the painter's tape in my studio and um, yeah, just put it on a bookshelf where I keep my yarns and I can reuse it quite a few times before I have to throw it away. All right, so the next step is to tighten the tension. So I'm gonna just keep it like this. So again, both sides are taped. Now, the only thing you need now are your hands again. Uh, so here, my warp starts at the base, so it's going up and the warp yarn that's at the top is coming back down. So this row is going up, so I can pull it up with one hand. And with the second row, I'm gonna pull down with the other. 
kind of like a pulley system, right? Like up, down, up, down. So here, I'm going up and pull down. Pull, and then it's just alternating each row. Up and down. Now, as you can start to notice, the yarns are getting tighter. And although I've been keeping the tension while I was dressing the loom, it's still there is some slack. So again, I'm going to keep going. So with this row, I'm going down. And the next row, up. And down. Up. And you might be noticing that your work, just like mine, is starting to loosen. I'm just going up and down. And with this yarn, that this um, all I'm doing, I'm pulling it up and down. I'm keeping the tension. And then, right? Now at first the yarn isn't too long, but now you may notice it's getting longer and longer and looser and looser. Now if there wasn't tape here, this yarn would be going everywhere. But we don't want that. We want everything to stay in place. So placing the tape here really saves you from the headache. So I'm gonna keep going. We're going to continue this until we get to the end. Uh, for anyone new to weaving, you might be wondering why is the tension so important? Well, the tension not only helps keep the warp on the loom longer, it also helps keep your design in place and keep your weaving straight. So I think one of the one of the hardest things as a beginner weaver is to keep those edges or salvages straight. Um, that's and that does take time and practice, but something that can help. Oh, what have I done here? Okay, but something that can help is really making sure the tension is straight. When you don't, when you have um, when the tension. When, oh, sorry, keeping the tension high. Um, as soon as the, the warp yarns start getting loose, it becomes more and more difficult to um, to weave. And yeah, so even if you try your best, it it, it will become difficult. So. What I'm going to do here is next, I'm going to get hold that tension and pinching it down. I'm going to wrap the end around that last nail and pull it down. I'm going to do it one more time. I get nervous about it coming undone. Next, I'm going to bring it around the next two and kind of make a figure eight with it. Again, I'm just trying to make sure everything's staying secure. Nine times out of 10, it's not going to come undone. So then I'm going to bring it back around that nail, the sixth nail there. Bring it back up. I can show you a little bit there. Okay, hopefully that's clear. If not, just find a way to secure the nail here. Now I'm going to tie it to the front, around the last one. Just pulling it through. Just creating a knot. I'm not doing anything special. I'm just pulling that knot down. I'm going to tie it nice and good. Pull it through. There we go. The remaining work, since I have quite a bit here, and I've tightened it, just going to cut it. Don't need it. It's, okay. it's nice and secured. So now it's safe to remove the tape. Yeah, unfortunately I don't think I have a purpose 
for this one, but maybe if I have another project coming, then I can I can use it for something else. Let me just put that there. Going to the top again. I'm going to remove the tape. All right. So now the loom is. So now the loom is dressed. What I like to do here is go in. Uh, if you can find, yeah. And I'm just pushing down the warp so that it stays by the base of the nail. Don't want any of the warp getting loose, which it's not, but it always it's always pleasing to see that the all the nails are and all the warp is even. So now the warp is nicely secured. It's not going anywhere and you could, you could start weaving. But I have one more tip to help you keep and make a very nicely secured base. Let's take a look. All right, so here I have some yarn. So it, it really doesn't matter what kind of yarn you use. Um, usually I like to use yarn that I don't use so much so for example I don't really use acrylic so much um, but and so I use that because you just need three string three yeah, strings of it three strands of strings so um, yeah this is cotton yarn doesn't really matter uh, strong it's just normal yarn this is going to be used as warp spacers so um, Maybe I can demonstrate why warp spacers are important to your weaving. Let me go ahead. Hopefully the fork won't be too loud. Um, so let me explain. So when I weave, I like to pick up every other yarn. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here. If you're curious what design or pattern this is, this is plain weave, but here, as I said, I'm picking up every other string. I'm sorry, not every other string, I'm picking up every pair, sorry. And so. Okay. So I've made it through. Now let's say, let's say that I want to weave, this is just my plain weaving and I'm uh, starting my project. So when you start your project, you have to beat down your weaving. I just use a fork. You might have a tapestry or weaving comb. That's, everything is fine. I just use a fork because I have one. So when I'm beating down the yarn, I'm gonna say, well, okay, I want, I need some yarn here to finish the ends later. So I decide to keep weaving, um, but you know, as you weave the next row and the next row, the yarns are going to get closer and closer to the nails. And then you don't really have any space to finish your work. So the important thing with warp spacers is the first thing is that it helps make a barrier between the nails and where your weaving starts. Now, let me see if I can move this up. Okay. Personally, I like to weave about, I like to have warp spacers for at least one inch. When I'm weaving, or when you weave a tapestry or woven wall hanging, <clears throat> excuse me, when you weave this, you, you have to finish the ends or the ends are going to come undone as you weave. So it's important that you secure the ends, but to secure the ends, you need to keep uh, about, I would say the minimum, very, very minimum would be half an inch, but I think that's way too short. But so I would say on the safe side, one inch to one and a half inches to make it comfortable, especially if you're just starting, I recommend keeping about one and a half inches um, of warp left. This is called your warp waste. So this waste is going to be used not to create the design, however it's going to be used to secure the warp ends when you're finished weaving. 
So, um, yeah, so there's that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is this. So uh, I, I'm guesstimating here that this is about an inch. This is about, let's see here, one inch, an inch and a half. It's about here, right where this is, I would say, one inch and a half. So I wanna make sure that one inch and a half is here and an inch and a half is here. And this is where I'm going to tie my warp spacers. So in the first demonstration I just showed you, I used this string um, with plain weave, gathering every pair, every other pair, um, weaving those. And um, we're going to just use this to tie it now as a warp spacer. Um, okay, the other reason, so I guess before we tie it, get to that part, um, the other thing with the warp spacers uh, or the warp base, um, the other reason why we use it is to help space the warp. Now, there might be an official word um, terminology for the warp spacers. I call them warp spacers. Um, yeah, but um, so as you can see here, when you weave the weft through the warp, See if I can show you guys. When you weave the weft to, through the warp, it's the warp doesn't. I like to say it's not so. It doesn't maintain itself so well. It needs a few rows of uh, plain weave to really straighten it out. Um, so if, if you're weaving every other string or every pair of um, warp strings, it doesn't matter. It's important that you really help st give structure to the warp. Um, before you start weaving. I think that helps it um, push out and give it a good base. So those are our two things. So first thing, for the first reason that we have the warp spacer is to give some space between the nails and the piece so that we have the remaining warp we can use to secure the ends. And the second reason that we use the warp spacers is to actually space out the warp. So giving it some structure. Now here it might not be so apparent yet, but you can yeah you can kind of see that not all the warp is spaced out well. So we're gonna do that with this. Now cutting or measuring the warp spacer. Everyone's warp is a different dimension, so you have to decide for yourself, or you have to measure your own loom. What I like to do is this, I weave it through, the yarn through, and what I'm going to do is to secure the warp spacer in place, I wrap the end around the end of the loom. So like I said, if one and a half inches, I'm gonna just wrap that around twice or so. And I'm just gonna create a simple knot. really simple nothing special here it's just a knot now I'm going to pull it now that it's been sort of been woven through the warp I'm going to pull it through now here I am giving some tension because I really want it to be secured this base um, but before I really tie it um, gotta make sure that I have enough end here so here I'm just checking the length that would be enough, so I'm going to cut it. Let me move these out of the way. So, I would say that you need, um, the amount of warp spacer you need should be enough warp that goes around one of the sides of the loom, can go through the warp and wrap itself around the other side and tie it. So it's up to you to measure how much that's going to be when it comes to your loom and its dimensions. So as I said before, what we're going to do is this. I'm going to pull it taut. Really, I'm, I'm pulling kind of as hard as I can. I'm not trying to damage anything. It's just I want to pull it taut. And as I'm pulling it taut, making sure that I'm at that one and a half inch mark, pulling it through. Now, as you can see, I'm moving the warp or the warp spacer on top of the side. I don't want to pull it under because it's going to cause some, like it's going to pull down the warp yarns here on the side. So I don't want to do that. I just want to pull it over like this. And you can see everything stays straight. Again, I'm going to pull it through. We want that one and a half inch mark. 
I'm using my thumb here, once I've pulled it as taut as I want, I know where it should be at, one inch and a half. I use my thumb to hold that tension. So now I can, my other hand is free. Pull it around again, making it taut. Again, holding around. And I'm going to tie it. a little bit short, it just keeps slipping out of my finger, but that's okay. I just need enough to create a knot. Okay, now the warp spacer is in place. Just make sure everything evens out. And you could always use um, a pencil to mark, so you know how much is a one and a half inch. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat this two more times and I'm going to weave it through with plain weave. Now I'm going to use this here, kind of guesstimating again how much I need, measuring here how much over to the side, how much I will need, like that much, here as well. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just cut two strips that are the same size. Same length, so I don't have to cut it again and again, or remeasure again and again. So I'm cutting with that end, make sure those are even. Pull them through. So now I have two warp spacer, two more. Okay, I'm just gonna put this here at the top. Now, you know, it also could be a bit easier as well as you could, uh, okay, there's two things you can do now is just weave it through and then retie them, that's fine. Sometimes I like to just tie it on one side like we did before, and then I have to weave it this way, so, sorry. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and just secure it. I think that's a little bit easier when I secure them in first, because then I can just go one after the other and everything will be secured. Make sure that's a knot. Now the next. Just threading the needle, needle with the new string. So, if you can see here, on the first row that I did with this warp spacer is I went under the two first um, warp strings. So now to continue the plain weave, I'm going to go over and then under. All I'm doing is using plain weave. I'm gathering the pairs, every other pair. So if you can see that there when I do that. There we go. I'm just grabbing every other pair. But, you know, take your time. You don't want to mess up the pattern. So here, maybe you can do it this way and you can see it a bit better. Okay, we're just doing the plain weave, so I'm going to continue. Okay, under, over. And you can check your work as you're going. So here, this one is... Here, the first row, it's over, so my warp, so the next one, the, the needle needs to go under. Now, so this is another, um, this is a good illustration why the warp spacers are helpful. So here, once you've woven it through, um, the yarns are, are bunching together. Okay. So here, we're going to take the time to really straighten them out, start straightening out those warps, um, those warp strings. All right, so I'm just gonna pull it a bit taut, and I'm just gonna take my tapestry needle and just start spreading out those pairs. Now again, if you did individually, um, 
if you're using individual strings, every other string instead, then start spreading them out individually so that they have equal spacing. Again, I'm just using my left hand here to hold this taut. Okay, you can see they're pretty um, straightened out. And then we're going to start beating it down. I want to keep that string, those strings really straight and on the same level. stay taut with my left hand. I'm using my fingers here to help keep it taut. And I'm going to just wrap it around again in the balloon. And bring it around. And do one more time. Just make sure it stays in place. Oops. I'm going to get this end here, the tail out of the way. You can always cut those if it's too long. Okay, now I'm using my thumb here behind the loom just to make sure I keep that tension. It gives my hand, this hand, a little bit more freedom um, to move around. So I just want to move it around that, that second string. I'm using my index finger here to just hold the tension to make sure that that knot stays in place while I grab this last row to create a knot. Okay, pulled and now it's all in place. Now you might notice that some of these are still um, bunching up. That's all right, I just use my tapestry needle or you could use your fork. Now here I'm just pushing, I just want to make sure everything is gonna be ready so for the loom to start weaving. Every row with the warp spacer makes the loom more prepared. So just taking my time to make sure that they, the strings are all ready. Good preparation allows you to not think about the loom while you're weaving and just focus on the piece. Okay, I'm gonna tie this last string around. Just a knot. show you guys here okay so as I talked about before in the first row it went under this row went over so now the next row <clears throat> excuse me and the next row I'm going to start under and then continue with the plain weave pattern okay so I'm going to thread my needle I'm gonna go under, over, under, over. And you can see now that it's starting to get a lot easier to, to weave because the spacers are helping keep those warp strings in place and in their fixed section. And they, they don't mind it now being in pairs because, I mean, honestly, if you look at it, you don't really realize, like from the bottom, you don't really realize that they're in pairs. Instead, they are uh, individuals, right? So it's all up to how you space it with the warp spacers here at the bottom. So let's go ahead and continue here. So here again, just pulling it taut. I want to make sure this stays taut here. Using my left hand. Straight. So I'm just using the back of my fork to 
push those needles, oh, not the needles, push the strings in a straight line. I'm still keeping the tension with my left hand. Okay. Later, I'm gonna come back and straighten these out more. Now I'm going to just keep that tension as I roll the yarn around the frame. I'm gonna use my index finger to hold the tension behind it. And pull this through. Just making a nice knot. not there. So those three warp spaces are secured on the left side and on the right side of my frame loom. Okay, and now the warp is all spaced out. Now here sometimes I like to just kind of push these down a little bit just to make sure they're all lined up. Now the last thing I'm going to do is push these warp nail warp ends down by the nails just to make sure they're all in place. And then the next thing, I wanna make sure that the warp spacers are all lined upright, that they're even in um, height from here. And then I'm gonna get done with the fork. Okay, just gonna make sure now, just if there's anything that I think is a little weird here, but as you can see, it's a lot more difficult now for me to move the warp strings around. So now everything is really secured and I can start weaving my tapestry or as many say their woven wool hanging. Now that you have a secured base, the base is, yeah, you, your design isn't going anywhere from here. Okay, so I like to just make sure they are evenly spaced out. You can use your tapestry needle your fingers or another uh, blunt tool. Just like to make sure all of those are secured. Okay, so this is how you set up your loom to weave on on your frame loom. As you can see, the top is still the same. I just like to put the warp spacers here on the bottom where I'm going to be weaving from, or at least where I'm starting to weave from. All right, so we could stop here, but I'm gonna give you one more tip uh, to help with creating a secure design. So the reason why we added these warp spacers, as we said before, to give us some space for warp waste and so that we can create some secured and even warp spacing, right? Now we have a nice secured base and we have enough warp space or warp waste. So how do we create a secure design? So even though we have the warp spacers here and we have enough space for warp waste, how do we keep those yarns in place when we are finished weaving? Now that's not from the warp spacing and just having the warp space here, the warp waste here. It all comes from the first few rows that you weave in your design. You wanna make sure that your weaving stays secure. So here's what we're going to do. I have some yarn here and I'm gonna show you how you can create a secured base in your weaving. So when you take it off of the loom and you cut it off, it doesn't come apart. So you can use any yarn. I just have this wool yarn with me. Uh, yeah, and I'm going to use, I'm just threading it through here. Now, if you are curious what I mean, let me grab a piece here to show you. So here is a recent piece that I've created. If you watch the tutorial or in the process of watching my tutorial uh, on creating a woven wall hanging, here's one of the pieces here. Oh, it's kind of falling apart here. <laughs> Not falling apart, but um, I just took it off of the uh, from hanging up. So here I have a secured base. Nothing is coming off of my design. So here's what I mean about having enough warp space. 
Here I've created a really secured base so that these knots or this fringe aren't coming undone. Nothing like I'm tugging on it, I'm pulling things, I'm pulling, I don't know, of course I'm not pulling too hard, but nothing is coming undone. So I'm going to show you how you can create a base like this so that your work doesn't come undone. So, oh, I'll just put it over there. Okay, so let's weave this base. So I recommend to weave at least, at least one row of twining, but I prefer to weave two rows of twining. So hopefully you've seen my tutorial on twining. If not, this will just be a brief introduction. I will link it in the description if you need it. So um, it does honestly, it doesn't matter how you start the plain weave. I'm just going to continue with the, from the warp spacing. I'm going to continue the pattern over. And again, uh, this, is, this makes weaving so much easier now that the warps are all spaced out and they're in place how I want them. It's, it's so nice. So I've woven the yarn through. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to create the row of twining. I'm just going to put my longer tapestry needle here. Now for this, for the twining, uh, row of twining, I like to weave it through and I like to have the end out. That's um, the length of, or uh, the width of the weaving, but just a little bit longer. Maybe it's a little too long here. I'll make it a little bit shorter. Yeah, that's okay. So I'm gonna grab, I, you can use a longer tapestry needle, that's okay, but I'm gonna grab my smaller tapestry needle. It's a little bit finer and it's easier to maneuver behind the warp yarns. So I'm gonna thread this. So uh, a tapestry needle like this is not going to work if you have a really, really chunky yarn, but this is, an, it's small enough that I can squeeze it through the tapestry needle like so. So I'm going to begin the twining process here. I'm going to create a row of it. I'm just taking my, so I wove it through. Now to twine, I'm just going to move my tapestry needle behind every intersection. So this intersection between the warp and the weft, when the weft is over, just move my tapestry needle over it, or sorry, under it, like so. I'm going to put this down. I'm going to pull it through. I'm securing this corner, or sorry, this edge by holding it, just pinching it while I pull the weft through. Again, I'm going to continue this all the way until the end. Okay. Now here this yarn is really taut, there's no slack. Okay. Now with this end here, well first what I'm going to do is this, I'm going to take my fork. Also when you're doing the 20, try not to keep it too high because it really does stay in place. That's really why I love uh, this technique. Sorry for that clacking. ends there. Push it down again. Now this is the end that I had a uh, wove had used for twining. I'm going to take it and pull it o over or around the first warp yarn. I'm just going to pull it down and I'm just going to use the loom to hold it in place. I'm not going to use that end again. Now I'm going to put this tapestry needle to the side. I'm going to grab the other end of that long yarn that we already wove through. Okay, and I'm going to weave it. I'm going to thread the needle here. Put the steps right out to the side. Now I'm going to weave one more row of twining, or one more row of plain weave. Let me continue this plain weave pattern. Going through. Now, 
this row is connected. They're all connected to each other. So I'm gonna just give it a little bit of slack here um, so it's not too tight when I twine it. Okay, but also I'd, I'd, this is the beginning steps of this piece and you always want to watch the warp ends, these two ends on the side. You always wanna make sure that they stay straight. So I'm going to just let it give, give it a little slack there. Now, the end that I had here, I'm going to take off the long tapestry needle and I'm going to thread it through the shorter one. Make sure they stay straight, a little bit of slack there. Again, I'm going to do the twining process again. Now I have this long string. Holding that warp end. Here I'm using this hand to put some pressure on the loom so it doesn't go swinging around. Okay, so again, really important to keep that edge straight. Using my left hand again, putting some pressure on the loom. At the end of this tutorial, I'm going to show you, give you another tip of um, how you can keep your loom in place as you're weaving. It's probably my favorite way. So now we have two nice rows of twining. Here we are. Here I'm not worried so much about the directions of them. The important thing for me is just that they are there to secure the weft uh, and yeah, while you're weaving. Okay, so what I'm gonna do from here is the twining part is done. I'm going to remove it, move this tapestry needle and go to this one and now we're going to weave i would say at least a half an inch of plain weave so uh with this thicker chunkier yarn it'd probably be maybe about five six rows of plain weave if you're using a thinner yarn it's probably going to take you a little bit longer so yeah but this is the best way that i found to secure those warp ends and weft rows uh, when you are weaving. So here I'm just gonna do a few rows just to show you. Okay, so now I would continue the design from here. So that could mean that if you want to uh, continue with this color, you could, or if you want to weave maybe some knots, some fringe on top of this, you can do that as well. That's what I've done with this piece here. Um, there's the fringe. You can't even see the base under it and it's a very bright color. So no one can see it and yeah, and I just continue on designing from there. Um, yeah, but if you decide that you want um, this to be visible, then I probably would use a color that is uh, for the next section or that, that goes with the design that you're creating. But always take the time to create at least one row of twining or two at least, I would say, and some plain weave to really give some structure to your weaving. So now let's say that you don't want to weave any more with this color, you can just cut it and simply tuck the end behind the first first two warp strings. So here I'm just going back into the design under it. I'm just pulling that there. Don't want to give it, make it too hard. And now I take my fork and beat it down. So this is a fluffier, more chunky yarn, so it's going to it's going to bubble up a little bit there, but 
then later when you start weaving more it will the weight will push it down and you won't even notice this little bump here Alrighty, so that is how you begin your weaving and that's how you secure the yarns for your project uh, and do the use of warp spacers so let's do a quick recap of what we learned in this video or this tutorial we talked about the purpose of warp spacers the proper placement of warp spacers, how to add warp spacers to your frame loom. Uh, we talked about, yes, we talked about the two reasons why we use them, right? To give space for the warp waste and to space out the warp. Then we talked about how we can secure our design uh, before we even start weaving. So we said we can use two rows of twining and a few rows of plain weave to help give that base. So. I think with this structure, your weaving will definitely stay on the warp, especially after you cut it off uh, and your design will stay in place, especially here at the bottom of your weaving. When it comes to the end of the weaving at the top, I recommend that you also keep about one inch from the line from the, the, um, the top or the nails. That way you have some space for when you're displaying it. Now here at the top, I would recommend once you get to the top and you finish the last row of weaving, can you guess what I'm going to recommend to weave? Yes, a row of twining, at least one row. Um, usually one row is enough, especially for the top, but two rows would be fine as well. All right, I hope that helps. And um, yeah, I, I'm really excited to see if this helps you begin your first um, project. And if this does help you, please leave a thumbs up and um, please let me know in the comments down below if you use this technique and it works. For yes, please let me know if it works for you and um, leave me a comment down below and a thumbs up and please subscribe for more videos and tutorials with weaving and fiber arts. Now, as I promised before a few minutes ago, I wanted to show you one really great tool that helps me so much when I'm weaving. I'm gonna go get it and I will show you what I'm talking about. I like to use these little clamps and they're so, so helpful when I want to weave in an upward position. As I was mentioning before, I don't really like weaving it on the table, but these are really nice. Now, I wouldn't recommend using these on your nice, lovely desk um, because they can, I can show you guys under they can scratch up your furniture so i only use this on like my old craft table like here it's on the nice desk but i wouldn't recommend putting it on your nice desk just use it for um yeah use it on your like an old craft desk that you have or something that you don't mind uh scratches or dents on because it it can do that so here i'm just showing it as a display but yeah you want to be careful when you're using these 